Thinking systemically about wicked problems for the social services workforce. Designing solutions. In the previous animation, we explored what is happening in your system and how you can gather new knowledge and understanding about how your system behaves the way it does. You're now ready to begin to consider solutions. What is the question that, if answered, would help provide a solution to your problem? Keep in focus what the purpose of your system is during the solution and design phase. You must ensure that any solutions are aligned to this purpose. For the social care system, the purpose is all about the people we support and how the services provided enable people to achieve their outcomes. In the inquiry phase, you will have gathered lots of information about your system from a variety of different perspectives, which, importantly, includes the people your system is set up to support. This new knowledge about your system can enable you to explore new solutions which haven't been tried before. Explore with your stakeholders where there is most potential to leverage change in your system. Remember, it's not always in the most obvious places that you'll find solutions. Be inquisitive and inquire deeply into proposals. Encourage others to be curious and share their perspectives. Don't rule anything out at this stage. All ideas and proposals need to be considered and explored. Solutions must lie within the power of your group to implement. There is no point in identifying a solution that would require a change in legislation if you want to improve the outcome of your system in the shorter term. Use the resources that you have gathered and created through the process of inquiry to provide a basis for your solutions and to test out consequences of proposals. As you begin to design solutions, think about how a change in one part of the system has an impact in other parts of the system. Will this impact be positive or negative? What can you do to minimise any negative impact? How will the change produce different outcomes for the people your system supports? And how will the different parts contribute to this change? Work collectively to gather lots of different solutions and consider how positive risk-taking could transform your system. Don't go for vague, general or open-ended solutions such as improve communications. Find specific, measurable solutions. Not all solutions will work, and that's okay. There is lots of learning to be gained from testing and taking risks, which can open up new thinking and ways of being. Within your group of stakeholders, agree on a specific idea to test out. If you're new to thinking systemically, you might want to try out something small the first time, where there is a high possibility of positive outcomes being achieved. This will help you grow in confidence and encourage them to stick with the process going forward. Now you're ready to start thinking about how your idea can be implemented. There are lots of resources online to help you think about this planning process, but some basic steps are to consider who else needs to be involved to make this idea a reality? Are there any potential barriers to their involvement? What ideas are there to overcome any barriers identified? How will you involve people who use your system, their families and communities? The National Involvement Network has lots of resources that can help you think these things through. Leadership is an important aspect of any change. It is important to consider how your idea be implemented so that all parts of your system feel they are working together for a common purpose. That people feel enabled and supported in their new way of being and that you harness the energy of all stakeholders to make the change happen. Don't leave your monitoring and evaluation to the end of the process. Build it in from day one. This will provide vital evidence later for scaling up successful ideas. Organisational culture will be a huge factor that will influence the outcome of your idea. Different cultures value different things. And as people, we often feel most comfortable, safe and reassured by what we know. This pull towards what we know can make new ideas feel scary and something to be avoided at all costs. Changing mindsets and organisational culture is not an easy task, so you have to consider how the culture of your organisation, your workforce and that of your stakeholders will enable new ways of being and learning to evolve. Create a vision for your solutions that people can engage with and sign up to making happen. Being clear to communicate with all stakeholders what this is and how they can engage with it. Remember, don't attempt to fix a problem right away. Let the fix emerge from the process. You don't have to be an expert in systems thinking. 
visual diagrams can help you think about the problems differently and convey complex messages in a simple way. When problems are chronic, you may have to find multiple solutions applied over a period of time to reach a tipping point of change. We hope you've enjoyed this series of animations about thinking systemically about wicked problems for the social services workforce. If you'd like support, advice, further information on systems thinking, please contact our team.